everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk about a very important and useful feature, not just in KubeSphere, but also in the Kubernetes community, which is multi-cluster management. As you know, this feature is already integrated into KubeSphere as of version 3.0, and many Kubernetes community members are already using the central control plane to manage their Kubernetes clusters across different platforms. First, let's have a quick look at why we need multi-cluster management. Well, it can be used in a variety of scenarios, and the most obvious one is definitely high availability. For example, you can deploy workloads on multiple clusters using a global VIP or DNS to send requests. When a cluster fails, the VIP or DNS records can be transferred to a healthy cluster. As for low latency, for example, we have three Kubernetes clusters deployed in New York City, Houston, and Los Angeles, respectively. For users in California, their requests can be forwarded to Los Angeles, which will reduce the network latency. For failure and business isolation, you can make sure any failure is isolated within a certain cluster without spreading to others. And so is your business, like Different departments within an enterprise use multiple clusters for different purposes. You know, development, testing, or production environments, all of which will be isolated, not affecting one another. As for vendor login, many enterprises avoid putting all eggs in one basket as they set up clusters by using services of different cloud providers. That means they can transfer and scale their business between clusters. While this might not be an easy task depending on where your cluster is deployed. If you want to know more about the use cases, take a look at one of our blogs here. Next is about the logic. How does the multi-cluster architecture of KubeSphere work? KubeSphere provides you with a central control plane. It allows you to import and manage your clusters and it has two ways for you to import clusters, which are called direct connection and agent connection. No matter which one you choose, in the multi-cluster architecture of KubeSphere, you only have one host cluster, where you can access the central control plane. And you also have one or multiple member clusters managed by the host cluster. In this tutorial, I will only demonstrate how to import a member cluster using direct connection as for agent connection, I will talk about it in another video. For direct connection, if the Kube API server address of the member cluster is accessible on any node of the host cluster, you can adopt this method. It is applicable when the Kube API server address of the member cluster can be exposed or the host cluster and the member clusters are in the same private network or subnet. The platform I'm going to use is GCP. As you can see, I have already created two instances on this platform. Both of them have KubeSphere and Kubernetes installed. Namely, I have two single node clusters. For those of you who do not know how to set up a single node cluster, have a look at this guide. And it also has a tutorial video. So I'm not going to talk about that in detail. These two clusters are set up in the same subnet so obviously I can directly import the member cluster, which is also called direct connection. Now let's enable the multi-cluster feature based on the official documentation. As you can see, the multi-cluster feature of KubeSphere can be enabled either before or after you installed KubeSphere. To enable the multi-cluster feature, you need to edit the YAML of KS Installer. This is quite similar to how you enable other plugable components of KubeSphere like DevOps or Service Mesh. So first, let's log into the web console of the host cluster. So this is my host cluster, and we will use the external IP address and the port number of the console. Enter the username and password. That's the default password. And now we are into the web console of KubeSphere. 
Now let's go to clusters management. And here is my cluster, the host cluster. Everything looks fine. And now I just need to enable the multi-cluster feature. So go to CRDs, search cluster configuration. Add YAML. Navigate to multi cluster. So that is my host cluster. So change the value to host. Click update. Now I have my host cluster. I need to set up my member cluster. So we need to get the JWT secret from my host cluster. So run this command on the host cluster. So that is the JWT secret. Likewise, we also need to edit the YAML of KS installer of the member cluster to be imported. So uh, that is the external IP address of my member cluster. Log into the web console of my member cluster. That is the same. Also go to clusters management and CRDs. Search cluster configuration. So copy it. For multi-cluster, we need to change it to member as this is our member cluster and update. Now back to the web console of host cluster, we need to wait a while so that we can see the central control plane on the host cluster. After you refresh the console and you go to clusters management, you can see this page, the central control plane. We have the host cluster and we can import a member cluster. Back to our guide, we can follow these steps to import a member cluster. So first click add cluster Set a name for the member cluster. For example, uh, member cluster. And add a tag, for example, uh, testing. You can also add a provider here, or you can just leave it blank. Add a description, uh, GCP member cluster, for example. And click next. We use direct connection, so we don't need to change it. Pay attention to this. We need to provide a cube config of the target cluster or the member cluster. Now we need to get it first. Let's take a look at this guide. So on the member cluster, run this command and copy all the content here. And paste it. Note that do not, do not click import directly as we need to change the IP address here, the server IP address. That is the member cluster, remember, that is the member cluster's API server address. So we can just copy the internal IP address of the member cluster. And paste it. 
everything looks fine and now we can click import wait a few minutes and the member cluster will be added refresh the page and go back to the central control plan you can see that the member cluster has been successfully imported click it and we can see detailed information of our member cluster everything looks fine likewise you can import other member clusters if the cube api server address of the member clusters can be exposed or the host cluster and the member clusters are in the same private network or subnet that will be all for this tutorial thank you for watching